Hey everyone, and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regions. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 28. In the diagram below, parallelogram EFG, so this one on the left here, EFG, H, is mapped onto parallelogram IJKH, this other one, IJKH. So this is a reflection over the line L. Use the properties of rigid motions to explain why parallelogram EFGH is congruent to parallelogram IJKH. So whenever we reflect something, it always maintains, it always preserves distance between the side lengths of the shape and the angles between the shape. It maintains rigid motion with this transformation for, with reflections. We, we can write that out. So you'll notice that I just underlined the important thing to remember. We have reflections, we maintain rigid motion, which preserves distance. On to question 29. Izzy is making homemade clay pendants in the shape of a solid hemisphere. As modeled below, each pendant has a radius of 2.8 centimeters. So this is the radius. And you notice that this is a hemisphere, which is kind of like half a sphere. How much clay to the nearest cubic centimeter does Izzy need to make 100 pendants? So we're going to be finding, so since we want to know how much clay makes up this, that's going to be volume. It's going to be volume of a sphere, actually. But it's, but it's really going to be a hemisphere. So whatever the volume of a, hem, of a sphere is, we're going to be dividing it by two or multiplying it times a half. So, so for a half, we're going to be, this will, be because it's a hemisphere and then the rest will be the volume of a sphere so the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed so let's just fill that in so we have one half times four thirds pi and then the radius is 2.8 cubed so let's plug this in one by one so we have 2.8 to the third power times 4 divided by 3 times pi, right, because we can't leave this in, we can't leave that pi there because this doesn't say in terms of pi, so we have to multiply it, and then divide it by 2, so we get this big long number, but before we get too excited thinking we have our answer, don't forget that we need to we need enough clay for 100 pendants, because right now this is really enough clay for one pendant. So we need 100 pendants, right? So we're just gonna multiply this whole thing times 100, which will give us four, five, nine, seven point. So it, it wants the cubic centimeter. So that just means the closest whole number. So we're actually gonna round, be rounding up to eight. So four, five, nine, eight centimeters cubed. And that's our answer. So just a reminder of where things came from. This is for 100 pendants. This is the volume for sphere. And then this is, we're multiplying times a half because it's a hemisphere. On to question 30. Determine and state the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius of the circle whose equation is x squared plus y squared plus 6x equals 6y plus 63. So this is going to be a little completing the square problem, and then we're going to find the center and the radius. So first let's write out our equation. So we have x squared plus y squared plus 6x equals 6y plus 63. So the first thing we're going to want to do is group together the x values and the y values. So we have x squared plus 6x grouping those x values together. And then we have plus y squared, we want to group the y values together. So y is on the other side of the equation. So we're just going to bring it over and subtract 6y. And then we still have the 63, keep our whole number to the right. So now we're going to be completing the square two times 
separately with the x values and the y values. So to do that, we're just gonna do x squared plus six x, divide six by two, we get three, and then we're gonna square that. And then we're gonna add that to our little group. And then now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side with y. y squared minus six y, divide negative six, divided by two, you get negative three, and you square it and you get nine again. So we're gonna add nine to our little group for, of, for y's. And meanwhile, on the other side, the numbers that we just added, nine and nine, we're gonna add to this side, to this other side of the equal sign. Okay, so now our next step is we're going to rewrite our little x value group to x plus three squared. We got the three from right here. This is what we just found plus y, we're gonna look at the same number on this side, which is a minus three squared. And then we're gonna add these all together. 63 plus nine plus nine will give us 81. So, so we're almost done. We completed the square, which is good. And now we just need to look at this and find our, the center and radius of our circle. So the center is always gonna be right here, but it's, we're always gonna negate the value. So this is a positive three, so x is, is gonna be a negative three. And for the y, this is a minus three, which will be a positive three. And as for the radius, we're always gonna be taking the square root of this number to the right of the equal sign, which in this case is 81, which means the radius is equal to nine. And that's our answer. So I have a bunch of um, examples on how to complete the square. If this was too fast for you, don't worry, because there's a lot of weird little steps to solving completing the square. So if you want to practice this and see me go through an example slower, please check those out right in the top right hand corner. On to question 31. Use a compass and straight edge to construct a line parallel to line AB through point C shown below. Leave all construction marks. So for this one, we're gonna to wanna to take out our straight edge and compass. And the main idea for drawing a parallel line is to create a transversal first. So like a line cutting through the, the, these two points. And then we're gonna measure um, and create arcs and angles to make sure that they are even, that they're equal. So we're gonna be making corresponding angles to create a parallel line. So that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I'll show you how to do this anyway, even if that was totally unclear. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is connect points A and C. So we get this line here. And now we're gonna take our compass and just open it a little bit for a small angle. Take it to point A and just uh, make our little mark. And then we're gonna to go to point C, leaving the same distance on the compass and do the same thing. So now we're going to get corresponding angles going by measuring the distance with our compass from here, from, the, uh, from this line to this line. And make a little mark, since we, are, we have to make every construction mark, we want to make sure that we make that mark. All right, they want to see all the construction marks. And we're going to keep this same distance and then just go over here, up here, to make sure that this line is also the same distance. So now that from here we see that this is going to be, this angle is going to be equal to this angle. And by doing that, this is going to create a parallel line. So now we'll just connect uh, point C to this new point that we just made. And we have our parallel lines. So not hard to do, but definitely have to remember a couple of steps to get there. So if you want to learn about more constructions just like these that they might test you on, make sure to check out. I have a playlist of a bunch of different constructions right in the top right corner. On to part three for question 32. As modeled below, a projector mounted on a ceiling is 3.74 meters from a wall where a whiteboard is displayed. The vertical distance from the ceiling to the top of the whiteboard is 0.41 meters, and the height of the whiteboard is 1.17 meters. 
Determine and state the projection angle theta. So we then want us to find angle theta right here to the nearest tenth of a degree. There's so much different information that they give us for this question. And um, we really, we have to have kind of have a plan before we just jump into it because um, you might start going in a different direction. So when I first looked at this question, I started solving for this side, but that's not what we're supposed to do here. So we want to focus on the angle. So we want to find angle theta over here. So let's just focus on finding the angles of this triangle. So also notice that there are two triangles here. There's a big right triangle, and then there's like a smaller inside right triangle. To start off, let's first find this angle X, let's call it, over here of the big right triangle. So we're gonna find, so let's draw the big right triangle over here, and we're finding X degrees. So first we're gonna wanna add all this together. So we have 0.41 plus 1.17. So all of this adds up to 1.58. So we know that this is 1.58. This is 3.74, and we don't know what this is over here. So now we can just use Sokotoa to answer this question. So we want to find this value of the angle here when we're given the adjacent and the opposite. So we know that we're going to be using tan. So we want tan of x is equal to the opposite, 3.74, over the adjacent, which is 1.58. So now we're going to make sure we're in degree mode, good. And then we're going to go second tan. So to find this value of x here, we're going to plug in tan to the negative one, or arc tan, and then plugging in this, so 3.74 over 1.58. We end up getting is 67.09789212. We have to be careful here. So the reason I'm writing out all these decimal places is because if you look later, it says determine say, the projection angle theta to the nearest tenth of a degree. When it's at the nearest tenth of a degree, we're not rounding every single part along the way to the tenth of a degree, only the answer. So we need to write out the entire decimal all the way until we get to this angle theta. So that's why it's really annoying. But that's what we're gonna have to do. So we know that this angle right here, x, is equal to 67.09789212. So knowing that, we can actually find out what this entire angle is up here. Because we know that this is 90 degrees and we know that this is 67.09789212. So what we're gonna do is add 90 degrees, and then we're going to subtract what we got. So we got 157. So instead of writing this all out, I'm just gonna put it on the calculator so it's easy to see. So I'm just gonna go second answer, so I don't have to plug this all in again. And then we get 22.902. So we know that this entire angle here of the big triangle is equal to 22.902107888. And that's based on knowing what this value is, which you just found, and that this is 90 degrees. So now that we found that, let's look at our smaller triangle, which looks something like this. We know that this is 90 degrees. We know that this is 0.41 meters. And then across here is 3.74. That's all we know, right? So if we wanted to find angle Y, so let's let's try and find this angle Y here. Because now that we know this entire length, this entire angle measure, if we found this part, we can subtract that from here and find angle theta. So that's what we're gonna do. So, for, so to find angle Y here, let's call this Y over here. This is gonna be the opposite over the adjacent, so we're gonna be using tan again. So tan of y is equal to the opposite, 0.41, over the adjacent, 3.74. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna plug this in. So we go second tan, 0.41, divided by 3.74. 
and we're gonna get y is equal to 6. Point, and we're gonna write out all those decimal places again. 6.25610624 degrees, right? So this in here is 6.25610624. Four, four degrees. Okay, so knowing that if this section is has this value, and this entire thing is 22.9021788, we can subtract uh, this value from this value to get our answer. So we're gonna have to write out this whole thing in our calculator. So it's annoying to get this, but we, but we gotta do it to get the right answer. So we're gonna write out. So when we do that, we're going to get this final answer where theta is equal to 16, and then they wanted it to the nearest 10. So we see that it's 16.6. So the problem with rounding before this point is that you might get, you probably get something very close, but you get, might get 16.7. So that's the issue with rounding before it's time. So just be careful about that. But that's our answer. So if you're looking for more on this test, check out the playlist in the link below. And thanks for stopping by. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.